Hello everyone. Well, this is going to be in two parts, this video. You're not going to see it in two parts, but I'm going to have to record it in two parts because this is part of a vacuum cleaner I won on eBay. But the second part, quite a crucial part, has been sent separately. And the trouble is, it's gone into the Hermes network and it's been sent to the wrong local distribution center or whatever and it's still showing it's 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 just stopped there so hopefully by the end of this video you will see that i have received the handle but i thought today i better open up what i've got have a look at what i can uh, show you at the moment and then conclude the video when the handle fingers crossed turns up Okay, lots of different boxes here. This cleaner seems to have been well packaged, but um, it would take rather a lot to damage this. This was nicknamed the indestructible because it is more or less metal, all of it, more or less. So what's in this box? No, oh, I have been sent some sort of a CD-ROM Hoover. This is a Hoover 912A. Diagrams and part numbers from Hoover Limited. Well, that's a little bonus. I'll have a look at that. I'll see if I can show you any of that on the video in uh, when I do the editing. Here is the bag, and I think the bag is original needs a bit of a vacuum it's a shake out bag so obviously all the dirt goes directly into there so I'm going to give this a bit of a clean I'm not going to wash it but I will probably use some SIBO Duo P on it just to brighten it up and of course vacuum it thoroughly is there anything in here oh <clears throat> ah yes Oh, that's good. So I've got three spare bulbs because there is a headlight in this cleaner. One brush, which is not really much use on its own. And a packet of belts, two belts there. These belts take, uh, they fit the Hoover Seniors as well. They fit quite a lot of the Hoover uprights. So there's that. More packaging. Lots and lots and lots of packaging. So, whoo, here it is. Very, very heavy. In fact, I believe I read somewhere that this was Hoover's heaviest vacuum cleaner, certainly in the UK. Okay, right, let's get rid of all this packaging and we'll have a closer look at this Hoover 912A. Well, here's the cleaner head itself. And it's in really, really good condition considering this was a commercial vacuum cleaner. And commercial vacuum cleaners tend to get a lot of heavy use and they don't tend to be looked after either. So to find one that's uh, in this condition is pretty good. Now it's completely metal, apart from a few rubber, very few small uh, plastic parts. This is sort of a hammered finish. It's not a painted finish. So there's no paint coming off this because there's no paint on it. But just, I love the style of this machine. It really means business. So all metal behind this rubber lens, or well, it's not really a lens actually because it's just like an open grid. It's a bit dusty. There are a couple of screws to undo. There is the headlamp bulb. Pretty ineffective as far as I can remember on these sort of cleaners. It didn't really give you much light in front of the cleaner head. We've got the Hoover branding here on this nice polished plate hoover in a an orange color and they've got this furniture guard 
Now there was a later version, I think there was an earlier version, there was an earlier version of this and it had a two-tone hood. So this part here was a darker grey to the rest of it. The later version I think was a U708. You could get the very last one of this, I believe it was in a cream colour and it had a great big bumper that more or less enveloped the lower part of the base. Much thicker bumper than this earlier version. On here at the side you've got a foot operated switch that lowers the handle. To turn it on it does actually have a hand operated on off switch and the handle is in one piece which explains why the seller decided to send it in a separate box. So unlike a lot of Hoover uprights where the handle's in two parts, the handle for this is in one part because it also contains electrical connectors and you can see just there that's where it actually connects up so obviously until I get the handle I cannot switch this, this, switch this machine on because of course the handle has the flat mains cord actually built in and attached the mains cord will come out at the top of the back of the handle just under the um, hand grip so Obviously, hopefully by the end, well if you're seeing this video you know that I have got the handle so you will be seeing this going very soon. So at the back we've got the area where we pop the bag which I'll, I'll put that on in a minute. We can have a look at the underside anyway. So it's a pretty familiar Hoover really didn't change the design of this type of cleaner for many, many years. And why change something if it ain't broke, as they say? So it's got the famous Hoover Beats as it sweeps, as it cleans agitator. Just like the Hoover Seniors. The Hoover 612 I showed you earlier on my channel, who is more or less the same as this cleaner. You can access the belt without the need of tools because just up here we have a little lever that slides across so you basically just open that lever and remove the base plate. So now we can see the large metal fan that obviously rotates this spindle that drives the belt that in turn turns the agitator so it's all very familiar territory I think this cleaner will have a lovely low pitched growl about it can't wait to turn it on just have a quick look at the rating sticker here let's see if we can date this machine so here we go it's a Hoover model 912A 240 volts 50 hertz 350 watts and it has the British Electrotechnicals Approvals Board mark of safety. The serial number is 091270702814. Not sure if this is a 60s or a 70s machine. I don't think it's as early as 50s. Trademarks of Hoover Limited, made by Hoover Limited, Great Britain. This could well have been made in the Perivale factory in Middlesex rather than the canvas Lang factory in Scotland. There is a carpet height control on this machine but you have to turn it upside down to access it and basically it's just a little pin that pulls out to do with a bit of oil and so you pull the pin out and then you turn the spindle and pop the pin in to the position you want so basically we have three positions by the looks of it, one for thin carpets, then this says normal, I'm not sure if you can read it. So for normal pile you put the pin in there and for thick pile, I oh, actually no, you put the thick pile, where is the thick pile? <laughs> hole, or perhaps the thick pile hole, whoops, it's just there but I think it would probably be going on normal for my carpets. So that's the underside and pop the, the plate back like that. Very sturdy 
smooth running wheels, big wheels at the front, two smaller wheels at the back. And the bag just connects onto the back of the cleaner and just locate it at the bottom. Then we've got this quick release mechanism. So it's just pull it to one side and then push the bag in place and then you just let that close over. So that's the bag fitted to the cleaner. And to empty the bag, you'd remove it from the machine and then you'd slide off this metal clip at the top of the bag and open it and shake it out and empty it. A very messy job to empty these shake out bags. I'm not a fan of them. I really prefer to have I don't mind having a cloth bag as long as it's got a paper bag inside. I will be able to rig something up and adapt it so I can put some sort of a bag inside this. And of course at the top we have this spring here. That will actually hook over to um, a little hook on the top of the handle at the back as soon as the handle arrives. Well, for me, this is the end of the video, but in the shake of a lamb's tail. Hopefully you'll see this cleaner again with the handle fitted and I'll be able to give it a bit of a demo. Well hello again I said I would be back and here I am true to my word. To me it's been a few days since I started this video but for you watching on the YouTube it's been instantaneous. That is the magic of whatever I'm doing at the moment. Now, this is finally complete. As I suspected, the handle is in one piece and it was delivered in one of those long tubes normally reserved for posters, etc. Quite a, quite a big tube turned up. So the handle has been fitted to the cleaner. Um, the cord has got a little bit of damage and some tape around it. And I'm not sure, to be honest, if the cord is original. I don't know. I might replace the cord at some point um, for something that seems a bit thin. Um, I haven't turned it on. I'm reserving that pleasure for my viewers. So without any further ado, this is the bit my heart is already starting to beat faster because this is the part of the show where I plug a new vacuum or a used vacuum in for the first time. I don't get, I don't get, um, nervous about turning on a brand new factory boxed vacuum but when it's a second hand vacuum then obviously the risk of explosion well it could go either way it does have a big suppressor inside here and that tends to be the thing that blows up so it's got one of those big metal suppressors but i've left it in for now i've, I've had the hood off just to have a quick look just dusted it around you know it's quite uh, good condition so what I'm going to do, it's got the switch here, look, just on the underside of the handle. Whoops. Now that doesn't stay in. Yes, that's a bit. Uh, yes, it doesn't. Uh, there, yes, the handle doesn't stay upright. You should really only have to press the button. So that might need something looking at anyway. I've vacuumed the bag a bit better than it was when you first saw it. So I've vacuumed it inside giving it a bit of a wipe. It doesn't have a new belt in. So here is the hand operated on off switch and I have a feeling that down is on, I think. So, oh, stop doing that. It's made a right mess now on my carpet. Okay, so I'll pop it over here, folks, for you. As far away as I can get from the socket and I will plug this bad boy in. And I'll, I hope it's not going to be bad. I hope it's going to be very good. I hope the light, well, the, I've had a look at the bulb. The bulb seems okay. We've got some spare bulbs, though. Right then, folks, here goes. Oh dear, the bit I absolutely hate. I'm going to sit on my puff here, or footstool, as we call them. Right. Ooh. Tell you what, folks, Daisy is in the room. I'm going to just put her out, just because if this goes, it's going to really go. Okay, Daisy is safely out of harm's way. Oh, and I'm going to get as far away as I can and 
flick the switch. Oh. Well, it hasn't blown yet, but uh, that doesn't mean it won't blow up. There wasn't much inflation on the bag um, because I don't think there was much airflow. Um, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it again, folks. That's the worst over with. Let's try it again and uh, push this around a bit. There we are. Okay, we'll have another go. Well, there you go. She does sound a tad on the rough side, but then she is an old girl. Um, yeah, it's just, there's just a, a hint of a high pitched tone that doesn't, to my ears, sound quite right. It might need a little bit of oiling. Who knows whether I get to do anything else with this? I'm not sure. I might though, comment below if you want to see it. I might do a big, big, big mess test. Hopefully this might cope. Now, what I haven't done yet, some of my regular viewers might remember last year, I did my 12 vacuums in a year series. What did I call it? Vacuum of the month, that was it. And every time I used a vacuum for the month, I kept all the dirt. So I do have in my garage, stinking the place out, a year's worth of dirt picked up for my home. So I might decide one day before I buy a new carpet to put all that dirt down and test it and this is a possible contender for that uh, mammoth task but before i end today's video i'm going to put down a bit of dirt which um, i've managed to gather using two modern vacuum cleaners a shark upright and my dyson v11 well here's the v11 before it goes back to dyson when you see this video this will have been packed away and uh, Dyson will have received it back. But it's done quite well, but not 600 pounds well, if you know what I mean. Anyway, this is what it's uh, got in it at the moment. So we'll just um, empty that out. And we'll get my shark, which is over here. Let's see what's in, what's in the shark bin. Oh, crikey, quite a lot more than the Dyson, a uh, Dyson, sorry. I'll get a lot of thumbs down for calling a Dyson a Dyson. I didn't, um, I don't know who termed that uh, phrase for a Dyson. I don't know who the original inventor of that word, it certainly wasn't me. I wouldn't say anything as nasty as that. Anyway, got a bit of dust in the air, <coughs> which I think will be still in the air when I use this because Obviously, it's an old, old machine, no filtration. The only filtration on this cleaner is a cloth bag. But this is what we had to do back in the day. Okay then, one of my lights has gone out, so I'll have to plug that back in and spread this muck, muck about and uh, give it a quick go. Okay then, so I've just thrown down a little bit more muck to add to the pile, including some fluorescent sand and some unicorn hoops which i think will be snow plowed by this cleaner but we'll have a look shall we okay fingers crossed it's not going to blow up Oh, 
The air is thick with dust. But look, it's, it's back. The line of shame. The line of shame is back on my channel after a bit of an absence. Yes, because the belt is in the middle on this 912A and on most Hoover Senior type cleaners and juniors, in fact, the belt is in the middle. So we have a line of shame where, of course, we don't have any brushing action. This would benefit from a new set of brushes, I think, and a new belt, but not bad, not bad at all. I might raise up the, the height of the machine. I'm not sure what setting I've got it on. I think I've got it on normal. Um, I might raise it up to the high pile and just see if it'll pick up any better. Well, after a few passes, the carpet is absolutely spotless, but the air, I can feel there's quite a bit of dust in the air. But back in the day, people didn't care about airborne particles. They weren't so affected as they are now by them. So obviously, if you've got asthma or allergies, using one of these to clean your home is probably not the best idea, especially when you come to empty it because it's very, very messy to empty, isn't it? So to empty it, I don't know what the best way of doing this is. I wonder how you used to do it. Perhaps it might be better if I was to recline the handle. It's gonna spill dirt out there, whatever I do. Now I have switched it off at the wall socket. So you have to be quite careful now, obviously. <laughs> it's spewing out. A lot of the muck. Deary me. How we managed to cope with vacuums like this. But of course, back in the day, folks, a vacuum cleaner with a shakeout bag like this would have been far preferable to the housewife or the servants. Far preferable to empty a bag like this than take your rugs out, put them over the washing line and beat them with a carpet beater. So we find this very primitive in our modern day, but back in the day, it's all we had. So to empty, best to do this outside folks. Slide the clip off and tip out the muck, give it a shake. But of course, a lot of this mess will be left lining the dust bag. As you can see, this was vacuumed clean and now it's absolutely caked in muck. So obviously, when the disposable paper bags were introduced, that was certainly a big innovation, made the disposal of the dirt far cleaner. You could say, of course, we've gone full circle with bagless cleaners. Obviously, a modern bagless vacuum on the whole is a bit easier and cleaner to empty than a cloth shakeout bag. But whether it's an old machine like this with a shakeout bag or a brand new Dyson or Shark or any other bagless vacuum, you're still exposing yourself to the dust when you empty it. But with a bag, with a decent bag, especially a self-sealing bag, your exposure to dust and any airborne particles that are released when you open up a bagless cleaner, well, you don't get that 
with a decent modern bagged machine and I still prefer bagged cleaners even in 2019 the time of making this video for me my personal preference is a decent quality made bagged cleaner but I'm starting to be in the minority here anyway I hope you've enjoyed seeing this old Hoover 912A in action if you want to see a big big mess test let me know below and I'll see what I can do. Don't forget check out my other videos there's well over a thousand videos on my channel now so enough to keep you entertained on the rainiest of days. See you all soon, bye for now.